Welcome back to the Tiger's Den Podcast, guys. Before we get started, smash that thumbs up button and subscribe if you're brand new. And shout out to the Noti Squad. I see y'all. Make sure you guys click that bell and join the best squad on YouTube. Talk about a defensive struggle. 69-62 to 62 was your final in the Meineke Car Care Bowl. The first half was dominated by Northwestern, putting up 41 points. But our Tigers tried to claw back by scoring 37 in the second half, but it wasn't enough. Devontae Kincaid in his last game as a Tiger threw for 438 yards, two touchdowns, but three costly interceptions. On the ground, Martez Carter carried the pill 21 times for 112 yards and three scores. Kincaid also added 112 yards and one touchdown visit. Flowers and Jackson both got into the end zone as well. Through the air, Tez led the way with six grabs for 94 yards. Darrell Clark had five catches for 67 yards and an incredible beast mode touchdown. Route and Davis both finished with over 70 yards receiving. On defense, Diamante Johnson led the way with nine tackles. Christmas and Bridgewater both had six, and Kendall Hill had the lone sack on the day. It was truly a rough day for our G-Men defense. Thorson, who didn't play in the first meeting, had a Heisman-type game, throwing for 247 yards, three touchdown passes through the air, but rushed for 177 yards and five. He has five rushing touchdowns. Last week, we said the defense had to be aware of the option run, but they couldn't stop Thorson. Looking at our season stats, DK1 finished the year throwing for 3,100 yards and 11 touchdowns, but he also threw for 24 interceptions. It's really been an up and down year for DK1. Some games he looked like a stud throwing the ball, but many games he had accuracy issues and would force a lot of balls. On the ground is where the offense shined. Who would have thought that at the beginning of the year, Martez Carter would have had a season he had? 293 carries for 1,680 yards and 26 touchdowns. When his team needed a boost or needed a tough yard, Tez was the man. DK1 also had a great year on the ground, 181 carries for 1,105 yards and 16 touchdowns. Kincaid made up for his passing shortcomings on the ground. The Whiteouts had an interesting year. Darrell Clark led the team in catches, yards, and touchdowns. The sophomore finished with 59 grabs for 819 yards and three touchdowns. But the surprise this season was Khalif Salmon. The junior was second on the team with 40 grabs for 664 yards and one touchdown. Tez was third on the team with 35 grabs. Derek Pate had 28 and two scores. And Devontae Davis had 27 grabs for 465 yards and two scores. This is a young group and can only get better from here. The defense. <sighs> In most games, it was a bend but don't break. When Meander went down, Deontay Bridgewater moved into the captain role. He led the team with 75 tackles, nine tackles for loss, and two interceptions. Junior linebacker Dearis Christmas was second on the team with 67 tackles and 11 tackles for loss. And corner Percy Cargill Jr. was third on the team with 49 tackles. Brandon Varner led the D-line with seven sacks. D-tackle Allen Clark, Christopher Johnson, and D-N Caleb Wells each had four sacks. Bridgewater led the team with two interceptions. Hill, Cargo, Cherry, Rockwell, and Jackson each had one interception. It's a hard way to end the season, but I would say that this team most definitely overachieved. A one-star team ranked as a 63 overall finishing with eight wins and a bowl game is unheard of. Looking at our schedule from this past year, it's been a fun year. We started with a tough loss to USF, bounced back with a solid win over Baylor, got rocked by Kentucky, then we went on a four-game winning streak, including the biggest upset in college football history when we beat number two Auburn at their house. Then Duke came back and punched us in the mouth. <laughs> we got back on track with a three-game winning streak, then our tough loss to Northwestern in the bowl game. But it's time to put a bow on the season and get into the fun part, which is the off season. Starting off, the G-Men were able to retain their, all their coaches, even extending offensive coordinator Adam Owens. Now looking at the players leaving, we say goodbye to some important seniors. Martez Carter, Montrell Meander, Devontae Kincaid, just to name a few. And freshman Kendarius Jones has decided he wants to transfer to Akron. Unfortunately, we had no players drafted, but one player has signed as an undrafted signee. Congratulations to Martez Carter. He has signed with the Chicago Bears. Next season, we'll be welcoming a new player to Grambling State. He will be transferring from South Carolina this is Chad Terrell. He's 6'3". Uh, he's decided to leave South Carolina over playing time. He's a possession wide receiver who has some raw ability. 
And to the trail we go. The Tigers have four prospects on their radar. Juco running back William Higgins from New York. Wide receiver Demetrius Gunn from Kansas. Quarterback Phil Austin from Florida. And free safety Josh Carey from Pennsylvania. Here's how we divide it up. All 10,000 points. This should help us land at least three of the prospects. So we sim ahead. And this recruiting class became elite. Welcome five new members to the Elite 18. Gunn, Higgins, Austin, Carey, and corner Fred Paris all are headed to Grambling State, giving GSU the 22nd ranked recruiting class in the country. Now it's time to check out the training results, and it looks like Deontay Bridgewater is the best player on the team, getting a plus five and moving to an 83 overall. Our wide receiver core is looking strong. Seldom used Jamaria Jackson moves to an 81 overall. Derek Pate moves up to a 79 overall. Leading receiver Daryl Clark bumps up to a 78. And speedy Khalif Salmon moves up to a 70 overall. The offensive line got a little bit stronger in the offseason, while the D-line gets beastly. Varner and Richardson both get a plus five. La Allen Clark is up to a 75 overall. The G-Men linebacking core got faster. Markel Jackson jumps up to a 76 overall. Darius Christmas is a 69 overall with the boost in speed and acceleration. And Donald Freeman might just be our fastest linebacker with 88 speed and 90 acceleration. At corner, Percy Cargo jumps up to a 74 overall with a bump in speed and awareness. So in all, the G-Men are looking nice going into next season with the additions to the recruiting class. So after a lot of back and forth and votes in the comments section, Grambling State has officially joined the Sun Belt Conference by themselves. A deal couldn't be reached with Southern University, but Grambling has inked a one-year deal with the Sun Belt. The school and the conference will revisit the deal at the end of the year to work out a longer extension. So here's a look at our schedule going into season two. We open up with a trip to Carter Finley Stadium to take on the number nine Wolfpack of NC State. Then after a bye, we host LSU. Then it's conference play. And at the end of the season, we travel to Baton Rouge to take on our rivals, the Southern University Jaguars. I'm going to edit players, work on depth charts, make substitutions, and all that stuff. You guys will see all of that in week one versus NC State. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm super excited for season two, and I hope you guys are too. We're going to jump right into the season and kick things off against the number nine ranked Wolfpack of NC State. So make sure you guys smash that thumbs up button and subscribe if you're brand new. And drop comments down below which recruit are you excited to see hit the field this year. Have a great day, guys. Two fingers in the air. Peace.